Hi, and welcome to another video for our ASP.NET web development series. In this section of the videos, we're going to be working on layouts. So you can see this page here that shows the idea of what a layout is. We're going to take our existing program and incorporate a layout. So there are three things ahead of us. We're going to learn how to use Razor layouts. We're going to use the NuGet package manager in Visual Studio and add two dependencies to our project. We'll add the Bootstrap dependency, which is a library for formatting CSS. And then we're going to add jQuery, which is a popular JavaScript library that is allowing you to create different animations on your page. So let's uh, focus here on what layouts are going to look like. So let's take a look at the diagram here in the center of the page. What's a layout for? Well, it organizes your page. It makes it consistent from one page to another so your users don't get lost. And it reduces code so that way you only have to code the header of your page one time. So most of the work that we'll do here is with the header and the content specific things. So now let's switch back into the application that we've been working on. So this is the state of the application at the last video. So we created a table with users and we formatted it with CSS. Now we're going to apply layouts to this page. So here is the project in the Project Explorer. Let's go look in the Views section. This is where we're going to create the layouts. So it's probably a good idea to add a folder and call it the word shared, which is going to be shared among all of the uh, pages in our application. Inside the shared folder, I'm going to choose add, and I'm going to choose a new item here. So I'm going to go into the section called web, choose razor, and look for the layout page for razor. And then I'm going to name my layout as my default layout. And let's click add. You can see that the code is automatically generated for us. And in this layout, there is a header and a section called body. One other detail that I have failed to mention is that frequently when you work with layouts, you use an underscore character to begin the file name. So let's rename our layout, and I'm going to insert the underscore. So that's the shift key and the minus sign. And so now uh, that, that kind of represents that it's part of a larger page. It's just a syntax uh, a convention that people use. So in the body section, I'm going to insert a new command called render page. So the name of the page that I'm going to insert is called header. I'm going to use the underscore character to emphasize that it is a partial page. Now the extension for any razor page is CS, which stands for C sharp, HTML. So that's the blend of those two languages. Next, I will copy the header page and insert it below the body. We will name this as footer. So there's going to be a header, a body, and a footer on our page. Now obviously these two pages don't exist yet. I've just invented their names. So let's create them now. So I'm going back to the shared folder and right click, choose add, choose new item, and I'm going to choose another layout page. I'm going to name this underscore header and I'm capitalizing H. I need to be letter for letter perfect on the match between what I put here and what I stated in the previous file. Now, since header is just a partial page, I'm going to highlight the entire contents of it and delete it. So just for benefits of future uh, CSS work, I'm going to surround everything here with a div, and then inside there will be an H2. The title of your page will go here, so I will call it Welcome to our activity. I would like the page to be centered or at the top of the page, so let's go ahead and put a, a line statement in the uh, div tag. Just as I added a header, I'm going to add a footer. So let's right click in the shared folder, choose add an item, choose a layout page, and name it underscore footer. Once again, I'm going to erase all of its content and replace it. 
So let's delete all of the content and replace it with a footer message. So once again, I'll use a div tag, and then I'm going to use an H5. Put some kind of a copyright notice at the bottom of the page with your company name. Invent a good company name. And uh, notice the copyright symbol is an and copy semicolon. So that will produce the little circle with a C in it. Later on, I'm going to add some CSS to style this. So let's go ahead and add a class name to this div tag. I'll call it footer for a good name. Now before I forget what footer is going to look like, I'm going into my default layout. And I'm going to add a style into the header. So in the style tag, let's add some features. First of all, let's center the text. Then I'm going to stick it at the bottom edge of the screen. So the positioning is called absolute positioning and the bottom of the uh, line should be at line zero. And let's make it a full width. So just so that we can specify and see easily what the footer is, I'm going to add a background color and make it a light gray. Now let's return into the test view. This is the view that we were working on in previous videos. I'm going to modify the top few lines. First of all, we're going to add something to the object called the view bag. The view bag contains properties of your pages, including the title. So this is the title that appears at the top of the web browser. Then the layout. So I'm going to change it from no into a layout that is pointed into my default layout. Now look at this strange character. The tilde symbol means start at the root of our application. Look in the views folder, slash, shared folder, and then finally another slash, and the name of the layout. So the layout file is the main file that includes both the header and the footer. So looking at the diagram of a layout, we have the two green sections implemented in our page. We have a header and a footer. We did not include the menu, we just have the content or the body. So your layout can be simple like we're doing or more complex. It all depends on the, the needs of your page. So as we run the page, we can see that we have a, uh, a layout actually done. So at the top, we have welcome to our activity and it's centered. So that was the top of our, our header. And then the body of the course renders just like it did before. And then way at the bottom of the screen, you see this light gray background and then the copyright notice in an H5 size. So it's actually pretty small. Now this should stick to the bottom. So I'm going to test that out by adjusting the web browser size. So now you can see when I resize the web page, the uh, copyright notice sticks to the bottom as a uh, absolutely positioned item. While we're looking at the page, let's go ahead and inspect the uh, code that's behind it. So I'll right click on the page and choose inspect. I'm going to once again select the uh, selector item and let's see what kind of items are showing up here. So we have a div. You can see the alignment is centered. Let's click on the uh, item at the very bottom here, the footer, and we have a class called footer, and there it is. So inside of those classes, we should be able to see the CSS as well. If I were to expand the CSS section, you can see that the footer class has been applied here, and it has all of the properties that I have defined in my code. So just in, in case you don't know, you can experiment with these. You can change the colors if you want to increase the uh, visibility on things, like there we can see that the background color is now red. Uh, all of this is adjustable right here in the browser if you have Chrome. Let's review what we made. We made a header, a footer, and a layout page, and we've applied some CSS styles. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to incorporate some bootstrap items so that your CSS coding is pretty much done for you. So we'll see you soon.